everybody, Johnny here. In this video, we're going to take a look at some of the ways we can use fields and the nodes that we sometimes call setter nodes. There's a bunch of them, so let's jump into it. I'm going to go ahead and replace my cube with something a little more interesting, in this case, an icosphere. The first couple of nodes we want to look at are under the geometry section. There's set ID and set position. In the field inputs video, I mentioned the ID input. This field gives us a stable ID for each point of our geometry. The set ID node lets us change those stable IDs. When we add this node and see the ID column appear in the spreadsheet view, we see that the IDs are lining up with the indexes. So here I could add an input ID node, route it into ID. Of course, nothing changes because this input gets this output implicitly if we don't connect anything to it. However, since this is just an integer, we can do some math with it. And so now I've increased the ID plus one for every ID. Of course, like many of these setter nodes, we can use a selection input to only affect the ones that we want. These IDs can be very handy later if you're transferring attributes from one thing to another. Now let's look at the set position node. By default, the set position node gets the position of each point implicitly and has an offset of 000. The selection is true for all points. So let's add a selection to this. Let's do the index. So let's add a compare floats node and we'll say greater than 20. So now if the index is greater than 20, we'll be affecting it with the set position node. We could do something simple like changing the Z offset. Or if we wanted to move the points outward, we could offset by their normal by using the input normal node. So now if the index is greater than 20, it's being pushed outwards. If we wanted that result to be even greater, we could scale that vector using a vector math node and changing it to scale mode. The set position and set ID nodes will work with most geometries like meshes, curves, point clouds, etc. While we have a mesh on the screen, let's take a look at the mesh specific setter node. That's mesh set shade smooth. We have a Boolean socket for whether that point is going to be shaded smooth or not. And we also have a selection input so we can only affect the parts we want to. And because shade smooth is a Boolean as well, we could feed a separate selection into shade smooth and have only parts of the selected part be shaded smooth or not. There's a lot of options there. Let's move on to a curve object. Under curve, we have quite a few setters. We have set curve radius. Initially, you're not going to see anything. Over in my spreadsheet, I'll go ahead and change to the curves control point page. We can see that the radius is one currently for both points. If I change this, we see it increases and changes. However, that doesn't change my actual curve. That's because there's nothing currently on my curve to increase with the radius. If I go ahead and add a curve, curve to mesh node, and then give it a profile curve, like a curve primitive curve circle, I'll change this radius down to 0.1. Now, if I change the radius of my curve, you'll see that it affects the profile curve. Because radius is a field, I can plug a field value into this. I could input my index. At point zero, the radius is zero, and here it's one. Now you might be thinking, I can see that the radius is zero here, but here it's very small. One should be way up here. Well, remember that our radius may be one because of the index being at point one, but our curved circle radius is point one. So we have one times point one. So we have a point one radius here. Next, we have the set curve tilt node. Much in the same way as curve radius, we can set the tilt of our curve. It's hard to tell the tilt of a round curve, so let's change the profile curve to something we can tell. Let's use a quadrilateral and reduce the size, and we'll stretch it out. Now, if I use my index to set the tilt, we see it goes from zero tilt to one radians worth of tilt. Of course, adding more points would add a higher index. So if we resample this curve, we get a whole bunch of twisting. Of course, if that's too drastic, we could also add a math node to this index. 
And depending on what we multiply it by, we can twist this up as much as we like. After curve tilt, we have set handle positions. Set handle positions only works on Bezier curves. In Blender 3.0 Beta, you will not have this offset field. You will only have the position. If you want to calculate something based off the existing handle position, you will need to use the curve, curve handle positions input first, and then alter those vectors. So here, if I wanted to change the left handle position, I would plug the left handle position into position and then add a vector math node to this noodle. At this point, I could change those vectors in any way I want. So here I would be increasing the left handles. Due to the way that handles work, you can only select either the left or right. You can't select them both at the same time. If you want to affect both of them, you'll have to add a second set handle positions node set to the other handle side. In Blender 3.1 Alpha, this offset option has also been added to the set handle positions node. So you won't have to use the curve handle positions in order to get the initial position. You'll be able to offset them straight from this node. Then we have set handle type. I'm going to edit my curve real quickly. here. If I were to go in here and press the V key, you'll see that I can change the handle type automatically. So I could change them to vector, automatic, free, etc. The set handle type node can also do that non-destructively. So if I drop this on here, I can say all of my left handles should be auto and the right ones should be left alone. What's different than this from the set handle position is that I can set the handle types both at the same time by shift clicking on the buttons. So here I can change them to vector, auto, align, right from there. Next is set spline cyclic. When enabled, this will set all the splines to cyclic. However, if I have more than one spline, like this, I can use the selection here on a per spline basis. Because the selection this is looking for is not a point selection, it's actually a spline selection. If I do an input index and connect this here, this index is the index of the splines. So this is zero and one. So spline zero is not cyclic and spline one is because zero is false and one is true. After spline cyclic, we have spline resolution. Here, we can alter the resolution of our splines, and because this is a specifically a spline setting, the selection here is working with the spline index. So, if I were to pass in a value here, I would be affecting any entry in this field where the value is true. So here, I'm only affecting the resolution of spline one, while spline zero isn't affected. Of course, if I wanted to flip-flop this, I could do something like adding a Boolean math node and saying not. And finally, we have the curve set spline type. You have three spline types to choose from, poly, bezier, and nerbs. Some nodes, like the spline resolution, only work with certain types of splines. If you hover over the exclamation mark, you'll see a message saying what's happening. So in this case, the set spline resolution node only works with Bezier and NURB splines. So if I change this to NURBs or Bezier, you'll see that that error message goes away. Next, let's talk about instances. I'm gonna add an instance on points node and then add an icosphere and have that be my instance. Under the instances menu, I have Rotate, Scale, and Translate instances. We could also add a Scale instances, a Translate instances node. As you can see, the Translation, Scale, Scale Center, and Rotation and Pivot Point or Rotation Center are all field inputs. So we could use things like the index of the instance or the existing scale of the instance or its position or any other field value for that matter to make changes to these instances. All three of these also have selection inputs, so you can determine if the instance is gonna be affected by this node. So these are a lot of the ways that you can use fields data to interact with your geometry. I hope this gives you some ideas for some things you could do. And overall, I hope this inspires you to make something awesome. Thanks for watching the video. If you're liking the channel, 
consider hitting subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.